Hello all and welcome back to another showcase. Today we're taking a look at the Terra, which is a rover I designed for our January build competition on the Discord server. The prompt was build a small grid rover with an interior. So this is what I came up with. It's a three part rover. The TER part of Terra stands for the Terrestrial Exploration Rover. That is the main rover body. The R, the second R, stands for Remote Drone. That is that little guy over there, merged up. And then the A is the Ascent Vehicle. That is right here. Now, these are all merged together, right? So the reason for that is it increases stability overall while driving. And also, because there are no other subgrids on this rover, I can actually print this in survival really conveniently. You just start printing from the front, print towards the back, you'll print the entire rover plus the two additional vehicles all at the same time. Now let's take a look at each vehicle individually, starting with the terrestrial exploration rover. This is the main rover body. It is a 12-wheeled rover. And we're going to just start from the front and we're going to just work our way around it clockwise, looking from the top. So the front of it is pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot going on up here. We have our camera, our lights, and you can see that the suspensions are placed underneath the vehicle. This is true for all the wheels, and that keeps our wheels close together so that we are not bottoming out a ton because of how wide our vehicle is. This vehicle is not very wide, but it is very long. I kind of remedy the turning problem that that causes by having the front and the back wheels turn even the middle wheels turn, but they only turn very slightly. So this vehicle can turn about as fast as a vehicle, a normal front wheel drive vehicle that is half its length. Coming around to the right side of the vehicle here, this is where we have our only entrance to the vehicle. And you can get in it very comfortably because there's this nice little button here that lowers down the suspensions. And when the suspensions are lowered, you can hop right in. It's really easy to do. It doesn't take much practice. You just walk towards it and jump and you end up up here and the button also raises it back up there's a whole bunch more convenience uh, related to that on the inside but we won't go into that just yet we're going to stay outside right here above the wheel wells and this is the same on the other side this is access to your large cargo so you can actually put your tanks wherever you want in the entire vehicle by accessing through either of these holes on the side the right side of the vehicle also has a little camera the camera is right by your ladder so if you're trying to park and line your ladder up to something, you can do that. The ladder is just kind of convenience for people that don't use jetpacks. Not a lot of people really care about ladders. They're really inconvenient to actually use in the game. So yeah, if you do use them, cool. I like to always add them. They look nice and they do give an option for people that are playing in that type of scenario. Back down on the bottom, right behind the ladder, we have the ascent vehicle. It's all hooked up there. We'll get into that later. The back of the vehicle isn't really that dramatic either. We've got a backwards camera and not a whole lot going on. That's kind of just where our small vehicles are docked. Coming around the left side of the vehicle here, starting from the back, we've got our side connector. Of course, our camera is really close to the side connector, so you can use the camera to line things up while you're driving. We also have an ejector system, so if you want to spew junk out that you really don't want, you can turn that on got a little warning light so if you're driving there's also controls for it inside the vehicle so if you're in the vehicle you sit in a seat and you see the light flashing you know that that's on um, usually I like to turn these things off while I'm driving so that stuff doesn't spew out and get caught under the wheels and then projectile through my ship that's not as much of a problem anymore because I don't think those things deal damage but if for some reason you're you're jettisoning uh, ammunition and it falls under wheel and then shoots in your vehicle and blows up could be bad so I always like to keep those off while I'm driving. We've got our access over here, just like the other side. And I also have some seats over here. If you are with a group of people and you're playing and someone jumps in to drive away, it's kind of convenient for bigger vehicles to just be able to hop on the side and just ride from out here. You don't have to get into the vehicle, go through all the doors and do different things like that. You can just hop on there. Uh, this is kind of just because I love that effect. <laughs> I added one of these buttons to this side. You don't actually need to push the button to jump in the seat, but uh, if this was real life, uh, having it lower down so you could get in would be very convenient. All right, 
let's jump on inside and take a look around in there. Again, we've got this button. We'll lower it down so that we can get in. This button pressurizes and depressurizes the airlock. This vehicle, when you enter, this is an airlock right here. This is also the backup control seat in case you lose your main control. Um, I always like to have these somewhere really convenient for uh, when you're outside or something and you, and you just really want to get on your control seat really quick. So a lot of times I will put my backup controls in the airlock. It seems like a strange place, but it actually makes a lot of sense. So that's our backup control seat. We have in the airlock a button that allows you to toggle whether the airlock is acting as an airlock or just pressurizing. I generally leave these always to depressurize. That way it's always sucking the air out. As soon as this door into the ship closes, it will suck the air out and then you can leave and not lose any air. This right here is a H2O2 generator. So the reason this is flipped around like that is because it's hooked to the rest of the ship so that you can get ice in here, but it's only hooked through small cargo so the rest of your ship won't ever suck your bottles out of here. And I kind of like that because then you always know exactly where some of your bottles are going to be. Now, if you don't have ice in here, these bottles won't be able to fill because they won't be able to get to the other parts of your ship. But just keep ice in here, and then you always know where your bottles are. It's kind of nice. And they'll be right in your airlock where you generally need them. We got a little weapon rack, just because I love those. That's great flavor. And uh, this is a semi-automatic airlock, so when I walk out, Whenever I walk in or out of the doors, they will close behind me. That's what that sensor up there does. And these lights up here are set to indicate whether or not there is pressure in the room. So when there is pressure, it'll be green. When there's no pressure, that will turn blue. Unfortunately, I can't really do that because I'm currently on Earth. But if you were on the moon or something using this, that would fully depressurize and you would get the blue light. Coming into the main room here, this is kind of the lobby lounge area. It's got a nice little table, relaxing area. We've got the time and the weather. I know everyone playing video games hates seeing that, but I actually like seeing that because it keeps me on track. Over on the other side, we've got a bunch of timers. These are all related to the lift and lower mechanism. You can see here, the top one is green, which means we are lifted. If we click this, it will lower us, and now the bottom one is green. It kind of just makes sense. But uh, I kind of like that too. It's just a neat little feature. You don't even really have to push this, but it does give you the option to toggle it from in your main room here. Exiting the main room towards the front takes you into the cockpit of the vehicle. We have one main control seat, which has an absolutely beautiful view out the windows. You can pretty much see whatever you want except straight behind you. And uh, we also have two passenger seats. Right now I have these set up with programmable blocks just because I like the way they look. These programmable blocks are not actually doing anything. This, uh, this ship doesn't take any programmable blocks to run. They're just cool. Um, we also have this little system. You'll notice there's a button here and a sensor. This is so that when we jump in the seat, see we're lowered down here. When we jump in the seat, we will automatically lift back up. Take a look at that again from the outside. Bring us down. There we are, you see the wheels lifted there. Now when I get in the seat, boop, it automatically pops back up. Not only does it pop back up, but you see on the side there how the button turned red. It turns off all the buttons around the ship that let you move the suspensions up and down. So when somebody is driving the vehicle, it locks everyone else out from trying to lift and lower the suspensions. That way you don't end up driving along and bottoming out like crazy because somebody just hit a button because they were curious. Always good to have safety mechanisms on your vehicles. Also, from the cockpit view, if you like driving with your HUD off, I have an extra HUD up top there. So you can actually see really well while you're driving this vehicle what's going on. And you got a beautiful clear view, you've got a little bit of a HUD, see how fast you're going, see how tilted you are, it's pretty nice. Throw our handbrakes back on, jump out. Um, all of the hot bars are set up on all the different controls, including all the remote controls. It's a total pain to do that, but it's always good to have. So we're going to go back now the, from the main area, exiting out towards the back. We go into the utility section, which is where your survival kit is. 
This button here switches the survival kit on and off. The survival kit is on a timer right here, so it will automatically turn back on. That allows you to spawn somewhere else if you're in a scenario where you have forced respawn. So I always like to have that. We'll leave it on. This button here is lights. I also have light switches in this room. That's what this button is. Buttons to the left doors are generally lights, except for that one. That one's by the timer blocks that lifts and lowers. It's also a different color. So if you're wondering, that's kind of my scheme there. Then we've got some more buttons. I put a lot of buttons on this ship, just kind of... It's nice to be able to go back and interact with things. These are all in hot bars and whatnot too, but I just kind of like... Uh, like being able to turn things on and off. This is a repair projector, so when this is on, it will project an overlay of the vehicle. So if anything gets damaged, you can just turn on that projector and it will project what's damaged and you can fix it. And you don't have to worry about figuring out how to place things or what things are missing. It'll just show you. So that's always a good thing to have. I always leave that off though. Um, from inside the vehicle, this right here is gonna be your access to large cargo. Just like the outside, this lets you access anything that's connected via large cargo containers or large cargo connection points, I guess. Also in the maintenance room here, or the utility room, this is where we have our cryo sleeps. They're kind of stuck in a funky place, but they fit in really nicely like that, and you can walk under them, you don't get stuck or anything. I really hate when that happens, so always make sure that's not an issue. Got a beautiful sunroof. I love that, looks great. Out the back of the utility room, there is one more kind of half room. Now this room, you'll see the door is off. This room is not pressurized. It is open to the outside of the vehicle. So I have a system here that will keep that door locked whenever this room is being pressurized by this vent. Now, if you wanna open this door, what will happen is, I'll show you, that door's open, you push this button. First thing it will do is close your door to the rest of the vehicle. Then it depressurizes this room. And once the room is depressurized, it unlocks this door. Now, this is not really a full room. It's kind of just crawl space and a little bit of room for you to add, you know, modded blocks or whatever the heck you want. If you want to add some more engines or some more O2 generators, this is a good place to do it. You can kind of crawl in there and put whatever you want back here. It's a little maintenance hatch. And when you want to go into the rest of your ship again, you just push this button, it'll close that door, run the whole process in reverse. Yep, you'll see that turns back on. The doors switch, so now this door is unlocked. Again, just more safety features to make sure you're not doing things you shouldn't do and losing air. Now let's take a look along the top of the vehicle. There's actually quite a bit more up here. First of all, we've got decoy blocks. We got one right there, and we've got one in the back with a nice little antenna looking thing. These decoy blocks are mainly for weather. They're not really for combat with other players, but when lightning strikes, it will prioritize decoy blocks. So you'll notice if you get struck by lightning, if these decoy blocks are gone, you want to replace them before lightning starts striking, say, your other vehicles or your, your hydrogen tank. That would be bad. But as long as you have one of those two decoy blocks, this vehicle should be safe and it should hit the decoy blocks. The decoy blocks are in places that are not essential, and there are a couple blocks from anything that is essential. So even if there's, like, passing damage from the decoy block, it won't damage anything vital. And we also have a connector up top two spotlights which you have control from inside which are really nice they're basically cameras on swivels so you can control the spotlight and look around and zoom in and whatnot we have a collector in case you want to have a drone dropping stuff off who knows with the new update coming out with the ai update i might make some ships that you can attach onto here that do different things i think that'd be really cool and then you could have them do different things come along drop some stuff off and then go back out, do some mining, do whatever you want them to do. I think it'd be really cool. Aside from some decorative stuff and a few parachutes here and there in case you fly off a cliff, there's not really much else going on up top here. For docking the Terra with a large grid, there's two ways you can do it. You can do it with this top connector here, or you can do it with the side connector. I find that the side connector is the most convenient way to do it because it is at exactly the right height with the suspensions lifted to attach to a connector on a large grid. So if you're on the large grid, two blocks up, you put a connector, it will attach with that very conveniently. If you wanna attach with the top one, um, this connector height is a little bit too low and this one's a little bit too high. So you'd have to use a piston setup to get the piston to the, or the connector to the right height to connect to the top connector. Now, this height is 3.3 meters. 
So you set the minimum distance to 3.3 meters, the maximum distance. That's how high you want it to be pressed up, and then your connector will be at just the right height. We'll just jump in the vehicle here, and I'll show you the uh, attaching sequence from inside. Turn that off. You basically have to get, if I'm going to do the left connector, I have to get right up against this wall. As close as you can get without scraping on it, pretty much. And then your, your connector will actually be close enough. So make sure you have a little bit of room for yourself to do that. And it'll be pretty obvious when you do get the connection lined up. There we go. Now we're connected on the side. It's pretty easy to do. And you don't have to worry about the height at all. Drive right off. Now, if you want to connect up to the one on the other side, you can either do this from third person. If you don't have third person, there is um, something I kind of set up with this in mind, right? So, like, even in third person, it's kind of hard to do that. And the way I would recommend doing it is I set up on the hot bar the number two key, which controls a spotlight in the front. And this spotlight is purposely lined up with the connector perfectly. So you can look and see if you're lined up front back with this one. Back out to the cockpit, hit number three. That gets you in the other spotlight. The other spotlight is lined up with that connector in this direction. So you can use these two spotlights to make sure you line up your top connector, which is kind of nice. I recommend using the, uh, the number three one, the back spotlight, to try and line this up because that's just kind of the best way to do it. Now, I could go and jump back into this and be like, oh, I got it lined up the other way. Now I just need to line it up this way. There we go. And you got connected. It's actually pretty easy to do. And I kind of like using those spotlights to do that. That is the exact reason why I put them where I put them. There's also some other reasons, like just convenience. They give good coverage at a diagonal like that. But mostly for connecting to that connector and looking at if something is lined up to drop into your collector, which also could be something you want. If you just want to drive by your base, have it drop fuel into your collector and then drive out and never have to get out of your vehicle, I think that'd be kind of cool. I've never done that before, but it's a possibility with this setup. Now we're gonna move on from the main rover here. We've pretty much talked about everything. There's a few things such as the target lock detection and warning system and automatic door closing and error management, but you've seen all that in my other builds, so we're going to move on to the remote drone now. This is the little vehicle attached on the back left side, right here. It is an extremely simple drone. It's basically just one big battery, enough thrusters to make you fly, and one little Gatling gun tucked underneath there. So in order to control this, I am going to jump into the vehicle and sit in a chair. That way I can control it further. Just jump inside here real quick. It doesn't really matter where you sit. And uh, before we sit down, we're actually going to just walk back here. I'm going to flip on the antenna. You can do that from a chair, but it's just easy to push the button. So I'm just going to sit right here. It doesn't really matter where you sit. There's a few things you want to do before you launch this thing. And we're going to do that all from its remote control. So once you're in a chair, I'm just going to open up the control panel. I'm going to go to REDR. There we go. REDR is just all the blocks for the remote drone. They all have that prefix, so it's an easy way to get to all those. We'll just control the remote control of the drone. And then from in that, we'll go to the third control set. We're gonna turn on all the thrusters. I do believe it's that one. You should see little plumes. There we go. It's that one, number six. We're gonna turn on the antenna. We absolutely need that on. And we're gonna stop the battery from recharging because we need to use that to power our vehicle. Now we're gonna go back to control set one on the drone and we are going to turn off the merge block. And this is gonna kick us out of the remote control, but that's okay. I'll just turn the lights on here. So I'll hit number five, that's gonna kick us out. Now we just have to go back into the menus and you go to the remote drone thing again, and you're just gonna have to control that again. That's just how it is. It's because it became a different part of a different ship. And now we can go, we can look through our camera and we can detach our connector and fly off. And now we're controlling the remote drone. See the shadow there? We're just gonna fly around. You can use the little gun. It's pretty cool. And you can use this for scouting. Um, there's really not a whole lot to do with the drone. I think mainly what I would use it for is looking for a good way. Like if I'm in this valley, I'd use it to look for a good way to get up onto the ledge there or something. You could use it for combat. 
Eventually, with the uh, new update coming out, you could set this up with the new AI blocks and it could just follow you around and shoot things. And I think that'd be kind of neat, but there's lots of things you can do with it. If you're in a scenario where you don't have a jetpack, it is a nice way to just get a nice little look around. It is atmospheric thrusters only though, so it's not going to work on a moon or something like that. But it should work on all the planets, pretty conveniently. See our, uh, our drone down, or our, our rover down there. That's pretty cool. Not a whole lot to it. When you want to come back and dock, it's a little bit tricky because I don't have a reversing remote on this because that would require you to once again leave and then connect via the um, the menu, the uh, remote access menu, which I don't particularly like using. It's kind of clunky. I like just accessing the remote. So come on in here. Now we have a reversing camera, but you're going to have to use uh, the forward facing remote controls so it's everything's going to be reversed so it takes a little getting used to but you can just dock right back up here um, the camera is way down on the bottom by the gatling gun so you got to line the camera up way down here and you see it got us really close we can just flip on the merge block and we're connected up again and once again it's going to kick you out of the remote control for the drone so you're going to have to go back into the menu and gain access again if you want to go through and turn stuff off the same way you turned it all on. And I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I'll turn all that stuff on, set the battery to recharge, and we're good. And that was everything for using the remote drone. We did that all from sitting in the lounge, which was pretty chill. Now let's move on to the last vehicle here, and that is the ascent vehicle, which is parked right on the back right corner of the rover. This is kind of a unique type of vehicle in Space Engineers in that it does use hydrogen thrusters, but the fuel source is really ice. This is a light enough vehicle that the hydrogen flow provided by a single O2H2 generator will give you enough hydrogen to lift the ship, sending that hydrogen straight to the thrusters. So you put ice in, and you don't even really need to use a lot of tanks. I did put one little hydrogen tank on here so that you can get extra flow while near the planet, maneuvering for landing or doing something like that. But you don't even really have to have that on. It's just kind of, uh, it's there for the little extra oomph. So let's jump in here and I'll show you how that works. You gotta make sure when you're using this that you do have ice in it though. So ice is your fuel source and there's no real gauge. You do have the little hydrogen gauge and you can use your hydrogen tank if you have no ice, but you're not gonna last super long with that. I definitely recommend filling up your hydrogen tank or your, your O2H2 generator with ice before you take off with this. So make sure you do that and then you can just jump in the cockpit of this one. You don't have to do any remote access. We're just going to switch to control set 3 here so that we can turn everything on that we want on. You're going to want to turn on the O2H2 generator for sure. Turn out all your uh, hydrogen thrusters there. Um, I'm going to turn the beacon on. You, When you're flying this, you definitely want the hydrogen engine to be off. Otherwise, it's going to steal hydrogen flow from your thrusters, which you don't want. The hydrogen engine is just for when you're parked. If you're parked off somewhere and you really need to recharge it, you can use your hydrogen engine, but definitely turn it off while in flight. And make sure you turn your batteries to auto so they're not on recharge. And I will leave the hydrogen tank on for now while we are maneuvering. Once you're done with that, we move back to control set one. That's kind of my generic flight controls. We'll detach, we'll unlock, and we can fly right away in our little vehicle. And this vehicle will actually be able to take you in survival all the way up to space and back very comfortably. You just make sure that you fill your O2H2 generator with ice and that when you're maneuvering for landing or whatnot, you set your hydrogen tank. It's uh, got a stockpile toggle on the hotbar, so you want the stockpile toggle to be off when you're maneuvering for landings or coming back in, and that will give you the extra thrust you need to maneuver really well in high gravity settings. In space, you don't need it on, um, and once you get going up, you really don't need it on. So, And when I say on, it always says off because it's the stockpile setting, right? So you want it to say off when you want your hydrogen to be working. It's a little bit counterintuitive, but if you look at the side of your vehicle, when the light on the hydrogen tank is blue, that means it's stockpiling. And when the light is green, that means it's just allowing flow and it's working like a normal tank. So if you're confused by the hotbar icons, just take a look at the side of your vehicle and you'll be able to tell. It's just like the batteries pretty much in that sense. So yeah, this will take you all the way up to space and back. And when you come back down, 
Docking's pretty easy. I don't have a backwards camera for this, so if you don't have third person from cockpits, this might be a little bit more tricky, but, you know, same as docking with anything else. You just line it up, and then when you get lined up, you'll turn the merge block back on. Clang down on there nicely. Merge, lock, and you can just go ahead and turn the thrusters off and go right back to standby mode. And that's everything. If you've made it this far into the video and you want to see more content like it, definitely consider liking and subscribing. It helps out the channel a lot. If you're interested in seeing some of the other rovers built for the January competition, I made a walkthrough video for them on my community channel. I'll link that on the end card and in the description. If you want to get involved in future events or just come by and say hi, there's also going to be Discord links, so don't be shy about that. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this showcase, and I'll see you in the next one.